Uh, now then, we have to thank our next guest for her incredible patience. She's been waiting for us for 10 minutes whilst we were wittering on about uh, the heavyweight division. She is going to be featured uh, in our uh, first live event of 2024 for the IBF welterweight strap. Uh, Michaela Meyer very kindly joins us on the show right now. Michaela, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. How are you? Very well indeed. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. In the car with the dogs. Of course. You know me. <laughs> uh, about to take him to the P-A-R-K. I can't say the word out That's loud. That's it. But oh, 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 no, go on. Can I shout, Park? No, no, why have you done that? Why have you done that? <laughs> dogs are going to go crazy in the now, car. I want to see if they're going crazy. No, they're not even going. That's, no, they're, please. They don't. are with I can't do it. They're always <laughs> with Michaela. Whenever you see her, those dogs are with her, apart from when she's training. Um, you look really no, well. they're there too. Thank you. I feel really well. Um, this is my first fight in a long, long time, like since the amateur days that I, I'm not worried about weight. You know, I'm fighting comfortably, I'm training mm. comfortably, and it feels great. Like, I feel strong and happy, and I'm enjoying training more than I have in a long time. Just on that, on the on the move up to welterweight, Michaela, is it a case of that where that is where the opportunity for you was? Or is it a case of the body is now ready to be fighting at 147? So a little bit of both. I knew I was going to go up. I tried to fight at 135. Um, sorry, I'm trying to line this up. I tried to fight at 135 after 130, and it was still a huge cut for me. Mm. So I knew that I had to keep going. I didn't expect to go to 47. I expected 140. I said, okay, let me go challenge 140. Maybe let me look for a Katie Taylor fight. But Katie Taylor was busy. Chantel Cameron at 140, she was busy. Obviously, they have their trilogy coming up. Mm -hmm. And the next opportunity was to fight at 147 against Tasha Jonas. I got a call from top rank. They said, this is what's most immediate. Would Michaela be willing to go to 47 already? And I said, hell yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, let's go. Let's try and become a multi-weight world champion. Well, on that note, um, I want to play something to you. It's not like us not to stir the pot here on, uh, on Talk Sports. So let's get stuck in, shall we? Because Natasha Jonas uh, was on the breakfast show a little earlier on this week. Uh, and it's fair to say that she's feeling pretty confident ahead of the fight with yourself. This is what she had to say. I think she's got a good amateur pedigree. I, I, even the fact she lost, I genuinely thought she won. She's got, you know, good hand speed, good work rate, and yeah, good basics. But I just think everything that she does, that I, I do better. Very complimentary, of course. She uh, she respects the skills, but she basically respects her skills a little bit more, stating that uh, in every department that uh, she believed that she is better than you. Your comments on that, Michaela? That's how she should feel. And that is the type of fights that boxing needs, right? Like mm -hmm. we don't need fights where the odds are uh, a million miles apart. Like you want a fight that is close. You want a fight where, you know, half people think one person is going to win. The other half, other half think the other is going to win. So this is that, this is that kind of fight. We're giving boxing the fight that fans want to see. And it's two competitive females who are very accomplished, who have that experience, who have that pedigree and who both believe are the best. So that's how she should feel. Obviously, I feel the same way. Um, and that's why we're going to duke it out uh, January 20th and, and see who's right. I was just going to say, what does she do well? What challenges does she bring you on uh, January the 20th? Uh, I've said I think the biggest challenge or advantage that she has coming into this fight against me is that she is uh, Southpaw. And I've, I've faced Southpaws before, obviously, you know, with over 100 amateur fights, you have to. But as a pro, I haven't yet faced a Southpaw. And so that has been my biggest focus this fight is coming up with the best strategy against a Southpaw because it does it does change. It does alter the way you go into a fight. And I've always been the strategist. My coach, Coach Al Mitchell, in my corner has always been an extreme strategist. We always have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. So um, I've been really focused on on those, the proper technique and the proper combinations to go up against the lefty. But ultimately, you guys know, you see me fight. I love to bang it out. I love to put the pressure on. Um, but I can also box. And so I think this, it's going to be a little bit of whatever she brings to the table too. I don't know if she's going to box and move or she's going to a step to me. Either way, I'm ready for for either one. I like, I like to do both. So, uh, you know, we'll see. 
And you, you've also, what I was going to say was, you've also got continuity in terms of this being your fourth fight in a row in the UK. You love it here. You're very comfortable here. I imagine you're coming here fairly soon, in fact, because it's been a good time for you over here. And, I, and I'm expecting you, given that we're going to be in Liverpool for this one, to be bringing your guitar and playing a bit of music because <laughs> not a lot of people know how great you are playing guitar and that your career was going to be in a band originally, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm not bringing my bass, not a guitar. I played electric bass in an all-girl rock metal band for years coming up. And I know you have told me to pick it back up, and I haven't. I've been focused on Natasha Jonas, <laughs> but it's on my to-do list. I got to pick the bass back up. How and, uh, how about playing movie. after victory with the guitar in the ring? It's one of the most musical cities in the world. I know that's what I mean. You've it got the Beatles. It's one of the greatest it's bands a, of all I, time. I, M M Melissa obviously does your PR for top rank, but I'm only trying to help here. No, that's actually a really good idea. Let me uh, get a bass again, yeah. get a couple, you know, practice sessions in, and then you know maybe another fight or two. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm not jesting because I think it would go down brilliantly with the fans. I think those kind of... For it to of, play a role after party. Absolutely. It'd be amazing. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be amazing, you know. Um, but yes. um, this is a really big fight. Tasha Jonas was many people's fighter of the year last year in the UK. Year before. Um, year before, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, the year before. Um, she's had a great run here. Do you like going into the lion's den? Does that spur you on as well? That There's going to be 9,000 people in there. It's going to be absolutely very pro. packed yeah, very, very pro Tasha Jonas does that get the best out of you I think so I think that uh, fighting the best like a, a more strategic strong experienced opponent will always bring the best out of me but listen these are the type of fights I've always wanted unfortunately for me I've had a slow year in my opinion it's been a slow year it's not I haven't had the type of fights that have really motivated me and got me excited, but I had to do what I had to do. I had to take that step back and work my way back up to this world title. So now that I have this big fight in front of me, I'm grateful and appreciative. I don't care. I'll step into the lion's den willingly. I mean, that's what I'm doing, but I'm happy to do it. I just want to make a big fight for this sport, um, challenge myself and, and do the most I absolutely can like in my career time, because as athletes, you know, we don't have, forever so these are the type of fights i want to be a part of yeah it's your eighth world title fight i think as well um and obviously you fought with the ring magazine belts on the line before as well what do you make of katie taylor vacating at lightweight to only hold the light welter or 140 pound titles and obviously it's opened the way for the likes of caroline dubois who you may fight for that belt down the line i presume or the light welterweight belt as well I'm telling you right now, I will never. Oh no, you're ever, not going back down. So okay. <laughs> I will never go below 140. Okay. okay. At this point, I feel so great at 147. Even mm. going to 140 would have to be for a major fight. Yeah. And um, this would have to be for like you know the opportunity to fight Katie, Katie Taylor yeah. or or Chantel. But I know Chantel plans to move to 147, so it would have to be for an immediate opportunity to fight Katie Taylor. I'd go to 140, but. For the most part, I'm not going below that. It so, always no. amazed I, me. It always amazed me, Michaela, that 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 I think you're, you're about. Well, certainly when I stand next to you, I feel like a midget. I um, mean, you feel about <laughs> six foot two when I stand next to you. I, I, how on earth did you ever make super feather? Honestly. Well, fortunately for me, I naturally have a skinny build. You know, I have skinny legs and stuff. I come from a skinny family, but you know, all this training, years and years. Usually, people move up over the time over their career i didn't move up i fought at 132 in the amateurs yeah and then mm. i cut to 130 for the pros so for 15 years i've been at the same weight it's it's time for me to move up you one know, can't ever really... say a lady's weight out loud uh, age out well, loud she's doing so, it. it's fine so no not weight but age, age i can't say your age <laughs> okay, and i mean okay. you you do you 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 hit a certain age this year don't you so it's time I guess. I mean, I wasn't thinking about that. But thank uh, yeah, you. Gareth. I've, 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 dug, I've, dug, I've dug a hole there. Add, yes, over to you, yes, Adam. Uh, no, no. Here's my thing. I understand that athletes, they, they have a short time frame to, you know, where they're at their peak. Yeah. But I also think that other factors come into play. So, you know, how many miles you have on your system and the work you put in. So I didn't take my first boxing fight until I was 18 years old. It's not like I've been boxing since I was six, like most of these men who are peaking at 24 years old. Mm. I genuinely feel like I'm still peaking. 
I'm still growing into my own. I have it. It takes so boxing is the hardest sport in the world for a reason. It takes so long, so many years of repetitively going over and over these movements that it, it takes time to get into your prime. And so I still feel like I'm there despite, you know, being 33 years old this year. I, I still feel like I have a lot to show. So it's different. It's been different for us females. That's why you see most of the top women, all the girls in the pound for pound list are, we're in our early thirties. Mm. Sometimes some of these girls are in their late thirties. Natasha Jonas is 39. She's yeah. still a world champion. So I don't think, and especially with the science you have these days, things are changing. It's not, it's not so black and white, especially for us women. So um, don't worry about my age. Okay. <laughs> it's all about how you feel on the inside. Absolutely. <laughs>